Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wine with Jimmy YouTube channel. I'm delighted to have you on board. Thank you so much for popping by and having a look. I know there's plenty of things to find on the world of YouTube, but thank you for spending time here. So here on this channel, I create lots of content really aimed at those of you studying the world of wine to give you the confidence when you go into your wine examinations to really, really do exceptionally well, hopefully. Uh, so this series here is the wines of the world for the WSET Diploma, otherwise known as the Level 4, and this is a Bordeaux series. So just having a look at this, Bordeaux is a huge multi-part series, as you can see, nine of them in total, and this is series three on winemaking, and it's split into five parts. So they're all up there on the screen. This first part, one on red winemaking, is available as free content here on YouTube. But parts two through to five will only be available on my e-learning portal over at www.winewithjimmy.com. That's uh, exclusive content and lots more extras helped, really designed to help you with your um, mammoth task of organizing your studies for this big, big diploma course. Uh, if you have any comments or burning questions or concerns, you can get in touch by commenting on this video below. Uh, you can also click like to give us a bit of a hand and also subscribe so you get the updates from us when new videos come out. You can also get in touch by the social media you see at the bottom of every slide. So we're going to be talking about red wine making in Bordeaux, which of course is the predominant style of wine that we find in Bordeaux, accounting for nine out of 10 bottles. Now, fermentation styles usually take place in closed vats that will have pump overs, just like the usual practice. Of course, it depends on what you're looking to extract, but pump overs um, will happen uh, with different frequencies. Most properties will use cultured yeast, and that's for the consistency and reliability of cultured yeast. But of course, when you talk about the big prestigious and most premier style chateau, they will often announce that they use only the natural and ambient yeasts. Fermentation vessels include everything, but you'll find wood, you'll find stainless steel, you'll find concrete, of course. Uh, and typically, they will all be fitted with some form of temperature control in a region really that has had significant investment in the last 30 or 40 years or so. So let's look at those variable styles. Now, fermentation temperatures and the extent of post-fermentation maceration on the skins depends on the style of wine to be made. And of course, really the quality of your fruit, the quality of the vintage uh, considerations as well. Mid-range fermentation temperatures and a short period on skins after fermentation, somewhere up to a week, as you see on the slide, is what we find typically used for wines intended for early drinking, early consumption. And that's really to preserve the primary characteristics, the primary fruit, uh, and limit the extraction of tannin, that kind of uh, grippy, concentrated character. Um, but of course, we have age-worthy styles as well. Uh, we utilize mid uh, to uh, mid-range to warm temperature fermentations uh, and a total time on post maceration, which is longer than what we just mentioned. So often two to three weeks to four weeks. Uh, so, you know, about half a month to a month is quite typical. Uh, and this, of course, is to really extract more color, more tannin, 
uh, and create uh, more possibility for age-worthy examples. Uh, but maceration times with these examples will be reduced in poorer vintages or with fruit, which is not as higher quality because the more you try to extract from poorer fruit, certainly with the skins, of course, you're going to end up with problems. Um, the wine is then drained off and the remaining skins which are left behind will be pressed. This will be either in a pneumatic press or something like a hydraulic or modern vertical press. And they are believed to really give the best results because of their gentle way of extraction. The press wine, like the free run wine, is transferred to 225 litre barriques or barrels and the winemaker will decide uh, what proportion of press wine in, will be blended into the final wine, if any. It usually is. Typically, a lot of press wine is used for topping up as well, the barrels uh, that are in maturation. Uh, but the amount of press wine which is blended in really depends on what the winemaker wants to achieve in terms of structure uh, and things like tannin, because that's going to be much more dominant in press wine rather than the free run. Then we go to talk about malolactic. This takes place either in tanks or in the barrels. Uh, it's argued that um, in the barrel, it's actually quite beneficial because there's better integration of the wine and wood if this is the case. Top quality wines will be tasted, remember, uh, in the spring with en primeur, so in April of the following year. So many estates will inoculate with uh, lactic acid bacteria, LAB, to promote malolactic conversion to complete it before this uh, timing, because of course it's an exceptionally important time of the year for many estates in terms of setting the quality uh, and then of course the price of their wine. Cellars may also be heated to encourage the efficient conversion. Often you need fairly warmish temperatures for malolactic. Um, now, simpler wines, uh, so inexpensive or more mass produced expressions are typically aged, of course, in stainless steel. The, it must be the trick of light on this picture. It does look like these uh, kind of, I don't know, barrels would find uh, stainless steel vats in Alice in Wonderland. They're kind of like they're, they're curved or they're sort of bending over. Uh, but typically stainless steel is used, concrete though, uh, and also large vats, which are um, repeatedly used over a long period of time for maybe four to six months. And you may even find oak chippings being added for, of course, flavor effect and also things like micro oxygenation to replicate the process of oxidation. Premium wines, though, of course, will be matured in French oak barriques. Uh, it's very, very classic. Most common is a mix of new oak. Uh, one-year-old uh, uh, wood and two-year-old wood, um, but some of the prestigious Chateau will use 100% new oak uh, if they believe their wine warrants it. Typically, you do find this on the right bank for quite premium wines. But the um, that being said, the percentage of new oak is thankfully decreasing across the board uh, to more moderate levels across many of the chateau and estates. Wines can be aged for any kind of time, but typically around 18 to 24 months, depending, of course, on the quality of the wine. And of course, those with greater concentration and tannin will have longer than those with less. And also where the wood for the barrels comes from and the barrels themselves, how they are made. Um, there are a number of cooperages that are around Bordeaux and in the southwest. Uh, and uh, typically winemakers of Chateau and Estates will utilize a number of different coopers. So they have therefore um, a bigger range of woods to use for maturation of their wine. 
Um, typically also the toasting level of barrels used for Bordeaux wines is medium or medium plus. That's when the barrels are, of course, the staves inside are roasted. Now, controlled oxygenation. So by tradition, wines are racked every sort of two or three months, though so some will prefer to leave the wine undisturbed on the lees and may use micro oxygenation to replace oxygenation caused by racking. Remember, racking, the bung hole will have to be opened up and that's when oxygenation happens in that instance. It's actually quite intensive. Um, so they may utilize micro oxygenation to prevent reduction and also help to soften tannins. Uh, and blending is the last point we will mention here. There are generally two approaches to blending. Most estates, uh, that's those that uh, opt to present their wines in en primeur in the April of the next year, will blend over the winter because really their hand is forced. They want the wine to be as finished, and that's key, as finished, not finished, but as finished as possible. Uh, and that's because they're trying to finish it over the winter and, of course, making sure that things like malolactic are complete before the professional critiques will come in in April. Um, now, the outcome is not just a near final blend of the main wine, but really a deselection of wines, which will end up in the estate second, third or even fourth labels, which we find today. Uh, or maybe even some of it's not fit enough for use for that chateau and it may be sold off. Um, a minority of estates or chateau will blend a few months before bottling which is a process that we find actually more common around the world. Uh, and that's when a blending team can assess the evolution of each variety or each site, each plot uh, um, or, or, or each barrel, for example, before making final decisions about the blending process. Um, a lot of the top producers will work with consultants or flying winemakers uh, and really, that is as that consultancy role to help with the final blend. You've got very famous guys like Derencourt, Michel Roland, for example, which do a lot of work in places like Pomerol and saint Emilion. OK, so that is the end of this first video on vinification, looking at the red winemaking. Um, the rosé and white sections are a little bit smaller. That's coming up next. But only available on my e-learning portal at www.winewithjimmy.com and that's the same as the sweet wines on grape growing and winemaking. I know this is the winemaking series but sweet wine as per the text actually goes into those two areas, grape growing as well as winemaking. Any comments or questions or concerns please do pop them in the comment section below this video. Please make sure you click like and subscribe and if you do find yourself in London in the United Kingdom then please come and see me for a class, a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now.